Now we want to take you to an island nation fighting for its life. The Maldives has the lowest terrain in the world. They are the most threatened by climate change. As our planet heats up, the sea level rises. The wind is stronger. Monsoons and tropical storms are more frequent. 90% of the islands here have severe erosion. According to NASA, 80% of these islands could be uninhabitable by 2050. At this level, the Maldives will cease to exist by the end of this century. Imagine you grow up in paradise, where you have your family, your home, your friends, and all your favorite places. It's where you've created most of your life memories. However, this place is gradually disappearing from existence, and there's very little you can do about it. Well, that is the daily reality for the people of the Maldives, who inhabit 200 of the 1,192 island archipelago in the Indian Ocean. And this is happening because of sea level rise. And as you know, sea level rise is a byproduct of a warmer planet and human activity is increasing global average temperatures, causing ice sheets and glaciers to melt and so increases the quantity of water in our oceans. But it's also heating up our oceans and warmer water expands and so rises. Outside of an ice age, this is a normal, natural process, but we have really sped this up and seas are now rising on average 3.3 millimeters per year. It doesn't sound like much, but over the span of several human generations, this becomes more worrisome. For instance, oceans have risen 18 centimeters since the start of the 20th century, but the rate at which this is currently happening is increasing rapidly. And by the end of the century, sea level rise could be between 80 centimeters and 140 centimeters, which is really alarming for low-lying countries and cities. but few will feel it as soon and as severely as the Maldives. And that's because 80% of the islands here are one meter or less above sea level. So according to current projections, by 2100, 77% of the islands will be submerged. And this will displace hundreds of thousands of Maldivians. And if they cannot identify or develop solutions to adapt, they will literally lose their homeland and likely become climate refugees. Fortunately, there are solutions and there may be ways the Maldivians can adapt and innovate themselves out of this dire situation. And that is the topic of this video. I am Conrad Richardson, an urbanist on holiday, and this is The Urbanist. Welcome back. We begin in the colorful, chaotic, and claustrophobic capital city of Mali, the main population center of the Maldives, home to 200,000 people, one third of the total Maldivian population, who are all crammed together on this tiny island of only 5.7 square kilometers, which makes it one of the most densely populated cities on earth. It's really quite reminiscent of India, Vietnam, or Cambodia. And here they have all the necessary amenities, a fish market, a fruit market, schools, hospitals, several mosques, and they even left a bit of space for a green park. So let's head over there where it won't be quite as noisy. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a very dynamic city, but there is one small problem. The majority of Malé is only one meter above sea level. So with each consecutive year, the sea rises a little higher and every rainy season, storm surges become more severe, which increases the potential for flooding and erosion. And this is happening on all 200 inhabited islands, despite great efforts to fight back the tides. And the Maldivian government is already investing 35% of the national budget on climate adaptation projects, for instance, by building coastal defenses and flood prevention measures. And this includes a 600 
100 million dollar project to build a seawall around Mali. However, the scale and the pace of adaptation is grossly inadequate, especially on the smaller islands. This is particularly visible on the island of Guli. So let's head over to Guli and see what the situation is like there. And that right there is not trash. It's actually a desperate attempt to fight back the tides from sea level rise and coastal erosion. And Guli is a small island, 400 meters long, 220 meters across, home to 912 people. And government climate adaptation funds often don't make it to places like this. However, sea level rise and coastal erosion does. And this is particularly bad in the wet season. So the public have had to come together and create makeshift sea defenses, like you can see here, out of construction rubble, dead coral, rocks, wood, and whatever they can find. However, this right here is not a long-term solution and the people of Guli will most likely one day have to leave their island. And as unfortunate as the situation is, fortunately, they may be able to relocate internally within the Maldives. And that's because adaptation can take on several forms. And the government here is exploring two different options. So for this, let's head over to Hulhumale and look at one of these solutions. Welcome to Hul Humale, also known as the City of Hope. And that's because if you were to rewind to the early 1990s, I would not be able to stand here. And that's because prior to 1997, this was one big submerged lagoon, which the government decided to reclaim. And they did so by dredging the surrounding seabeds and pumping millions of tons of sand to form this land on what was volcanic bedrock. And they kept pumping the sand until this land right here reached two meters in elevation, one meter more than in the capital city of Mali. And it was developed in two phases. Phase one began in 1997, and by 2004, 180 hectares had been reclaimed. And with that, the first 1,000 residents moved in, some because their islands had been devastated by the 2004 tsunami. But at the time, living here looked pretty lonely. By 2012, the population grew to 50,000, and by 2015, phase two began, which added 244 hectares. But the construction of buildings and roads is still underway. And so essentially, Hulhumale is a geo-engineered artificial island onto which they are building this city. And to do so successfully, Hulhumale has to provide all the necessary amenities for modern living. So housing, retail, education, leisure facilities, tourism facilities, and they've even included a central park, as well as new employment opportunities for the Moldavian people. But instead of me telling you, let me go show you. Oh, and cats are, are important too. And in terms of housing, you have a diversity of housing types. On the one hand, you have large villas. On the other, you have high-rise developments like this. And in terms of transport, they've got a series of main roads, boulevards, smaller roads, and then between all the residential areas, they've got these nice pedestrian walkable zones. And they've even got a few cycle paths, although all we've seen and heard is motorbikes so far. And Hulhumale does have a bus-based public transport system that uses double-decker buses which connect phase one with phase two and link Hulhumale to the Vilana International Airport as well as Male via the Cinemale Causeway. And this new city or island is now double the size of Mali, but it has reached its natural limits. They can't reclaim beyond the reef, and Hulhumale here is supposedly going to become home to 50% of the Maldivian population, which will decongest Mali and also provide a home for future generations. Overall, I do find Hulhumale to be quite nice, but it does still feel somewhat artificial, and it's nothing like the natural Maldivian islands. But of course, niceness is not the objective of this project, but it also does have to be said that land reclamation doesn't come without its own set of problems. Because the dredging of seabeds can destroy coral reefs, which is not just a problem for the reef ecology. Because reefs play an important role against erosion. A healthy reef can slow down tides and break waves, which protects beaches and islands from being eroded. All considered, this isn't the perfect solution, but decisions have to be made because the 
clock is ticking. And the Maldivian government is exploring one other solution. A solution that's far more innovative and radical. A solution that doesn't face the same problems as land reclamation. And this particular solution is being explored in a lagoon east of Huljumale. So let's go cover that now. And this is known as the Floating City, an ambitious project 10 minutes away from Male. It's still under construction and we could not visit. This project is set to transform the Maldivian way of life. For centuries, they've been living by the sea and with this project, they will be living on the sea in a city that is literally floating. And according to the plan, this new kind of amphibious architecture will house 20,000 people who will live on modular hexagonal structures. This is in part informed by function and by nature. It's meant to resemble the brain coral. And this will initially include 5,000 low-rise floating homes, a school, hotels, restaurants, a hospital, as well as some government buildings. And space will be very limited, so there will be no cars. It will only be possible to get around by foot, bicycle, or on electric two-wheelers, and of course, by boat. And the floating city is being built in a 500 acre lagoon anchored to the sea floor, which will cause residents to feel a gentle swaying with the waves. But by building in this approach, it will make it possible for the city to rise with the rising seas. And it will also cause minimal harm to the seabed, at least compared to land reclamation. As part of the project, they also plan to build artificial coral banks to the underside of the floating city to stimulate marine life, which will also increase protection from waves. And the floating city project is already well underway. The first residents and guests will be able to visit some of the first modules as soon as 2024, and the entire project will be complete by 2027. So all considered, it's an interesting techno-utopian concept, and the renderings, I have to say, do look pretty neat, but I wouldn't depend on it saving the Maldives. Each of the 100 square meter homes will cost upwards of $250,000, which exceeds the budget of most Maldivians. That being the case, I do fear this will become a kind of gated maritime community for the rich to escape to. And it's also likely many homes will be bought to be rented out as Airbnbs, which will do little to sustain the Maldives. This is kind of similar to what's already happening with the Eco-Atlantic City project in Lagos, Nigeria, where the rich are taking refuge in this new development to escape the worsening floods. The floating city as a concept does provide an interesting and practical solution to sea level rise. And if it can eventually be done more cost effectively, it could become a lifeline for many cities and communities. Because if we cannot solve climate change, it does make sense to learn to live with the sea instead of constantly trying to fight the sea. So the future of the Maldives is scary. There's many unknowns and there's much work to do. However, as we saw in this video, there are solutions and these are being explored by the government in quite a timely fashion. And as the street art says in Guli, while there is life, there is hope. So on that note, I'm going to draw this video to a close. I hope this was insightful and I hope to see you in the next one. Back to my holiday. <laughs> we are done.